Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And of course, we open up old school magic. I've saved some envelopes. These are really nice, but there's also a really, really big one. This one, I think I know what it is, but um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this for last. Huge, big bundle. It's, it's magic related, but it's not cards. I can tell you that. And then we have some other post here three in total and i always really like those stamps which one is this let's get, try to zoom in this is a stamp from italy and we've got stamp from germany deutschland and we have oh this is a cool one look at that masters of presence that is a sweet altar and you see you can see the little danish flag this one's from i believe Let's have a look here. Yeah, from Morton. And uh, I recently played against uh, Morton. He was kind enough to let me test my uh, my horrible wall deck against him. And uh, thank you for having patience with me, Morton. I've um, I've really improved the deck since then. So I'd love to uh, to have another go at it if you still want to. Um, so let's just start with this, shall we? Start with the envelope from Italy. And you know, Italian post, I'm here in Amsterdam, usually takes a little bit longer, but not not that long. And eventually, eventually it arrives, you know, you just, you just have got to be patient. And here we see some cards. I believe this was a card market purchase. Let's have a look. Ay, 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 ay. A little bit difficult to open up here, so let's just get the scissors. Okay, there we go. And let's take a look. Okay. So, look. Um, so, this is all. Oh, here we go. This is what I ordered. Okay. Angelo Caduto. And I'm actually going to play this. I'm working still on my holiday deck. Um, I think I can make multiple right now. This is, of course, Fallen Angel, the card from Legends. Two black and three to cast for a 3-3 three, three flyer. And you can sacrifice a creature, una creatura, and give it plus two, plus one. And I'm, I'm going to use this in, I think, a red-black build. That's all I can tell you at the moment. I think I ordered three in total. And that's about it. Yeah, so all the other cards are just... Some filling to protect the old school goodies. So that is the post from Italy. Now let's take a look at the other envelope. This is one from Germany, Deutschland. And just gonna rip it open. Nice little package. I wonder what this is actually. I've seen these guys before. Let's have a look. FKTRD, so this also an order from a Card Market. And there we go. Oh yes, Wall of Swords. So a moment ago, I mentioned that I've played against Morton and he was very patient playing against my wall deck. And of course, Wall of Swords is a part of that strategy. And I just gotta, I just gotta place that. They're very affordable still from Unlimited. and. There's a reason why they're affordable. I know they're walls. It's really difficult to play with walls. But as far as when it comes to walls, you know, um, this is one of the better walls. One white and three for a summon wall, three, five flyer. I mean, this baby can hold down the fort for you and can give you time to do other shenanigans. So a full play set of wall of sorts. Really sweet. But now let's go. This envelope, it's pretty full. The cool thing was, um, I always like it when they put Timmy Enchanter on there. Um, the, the thing was, um, Morton actually contacted me through Facebook, I think, Facebook Messenger, and he said, hey man, I see you're collecting the dark. I actually have quite a lot of the dark cards left. Uh, would you like me to send you some? And like, I was like, yeah, sure. I mean, and he, he showed me some pictures and I just said, I'm looking for that one and that one and that one. Uh, maybe we can trade. How much would you like for them? Et cetera, et cetera. And he told me, he told me, no, nah, man, I'll just, I'll just send them to you to thank you for, uh, for the content that you make. And 
I mean, this, this, this is just great, you know, and this is, I think, something you only see in the old school community where people are just really open and relaxed and they go like, hey, man, I see that you're collecting the cards, you're going to play the cards, you know, I have them, I'm doing nothing with them, and I'd like to give you a few. So it's really nice. And I think I think that part of old school is a little bit like it's 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 undershadowed. Can you say that in English? In Dutch, you say overshadowed. But what I kind of mean by that is that people are always talking about the prices of cards, and and you know people are that people are showing off how expensive their builds or their decks are and all that. But there's a whole other side to old school magic, which I think is the majority of the old school magic players which are just very relaxed players. And they've had these cards for so long and you just enjoy, you know, playing them and going back to the nineties when they just started playing magic. In the meanwhile, I'm trying to open this case, by the way, which I'm not very successful at. Okay, there's a little bit more cellar tape over here. So I think, I think that's the side of magic that hopefully my channel shows as well. That's the generosity in old school magic and like the, the open and relaxed attitude in old school magic. Yeah, hey, really nice. Nice box. That's cool. I'm going to take the tape off and I'm going to keep that one. Thank you, uh, Morten. Thank you for that. So Morten, player from Denmark. And look at that. He just sent me, like I said, just sent me for nothing. He just sent me a whole stack of cards from the dark that I don't have yet. So these are completely new cards for my collection. So we've got a Bog Rats. We've got another Bog Rats. And actually, these Bok Rats, they can chew right through my Wall of Swords. It's so funny how, like, walls were such a big deal in old school. And, I mean, I'm trying to build decks with them. And I know it's slightly possible, but it is really difficult to, to use them effectively. And I know there have been some cool wall decks on the channel as well. So it is possible, but it takes a lot of effort. And with a lot of decks that I make with walls, I wonder at the end of it, when I look at my list... What if I would replace the wall by an actual good creature? Nine out of 10 times the deck gets better. So anyway, sorry, I keep rambling on about walls. I just wish they were, they were a little bit better than they are right now because I really enjoy playing with them. Anyway, Holy Light, this is actually a pretty good card. It's an instant, right? It's not a sorcery and that make, makes all the difference. One white and two. All non-white creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. So this is... Very, very useful. And I think maybe in some weenie, white weenie strategies, I think this deck could be could be better. It doesn't see a lot of play. I think it could see more play. Another Holy Light. Really nice art by, uh, by Drew Tucker, by the way. Let's just enjoy that art for a moment. I know that some people, when they look at Drew Tucker's art, they just think it's, um, it's just really ugly. Um, and I think that's actually a good sign for an artist when people have a heavy emotion when they're looking at your pieces. So some people say, this is not a magic card. This is not magic art. Um, to those people, I would like to say, um, you know, read the interviews with Drew Tucker in the Duelist magazines and also just take a moment to look at different art styles uh, because it is quite exceptional what, what Drew has done uh, in magic and for magic. So we've got another Holy Light. And four Holy Light in total. And this is one of the better cards, in my opinion, in the set of the Dark. Dark Heart of the Woods, one green, one black enchantment. And you may sacrifice a forest to gain three life. And that may not sound like much, because why would you start sacking forests? But, and I've, I've said this before, and I know I'm repeating myself a little bit here, but life equals time. That is what life gain does. So if you're playing this, for example, in a deck with Sylvan Library, where you're trading cards for life and you gotta pay four life per extra card you take with the Sylvan, this could be a great um, counter of that life loss. So you can gain some life in a very efficient way and especially when you get into mid game, late game, or even when you've got an aggressive build and you wanna survive uh, some hits a little bit longer, you wanna just keep attacking without keeping any defenses back, Dark Heart of the Woods can actually help you with that. I can see it's actually the wood, it's not Dark Heart of the Woods, it's Dark Heart of the Wood. I really thought it was plural, that last one. Anyway, beautiful art. I think, is this Christopher Rush? Yeah, Christopher Rush. Beautiful. Dark Heart of the Woods. Another Dark Heart of the Woods. Wow. I can't believe you said... This is so... Thank you, uh, thank you, Martin. 
Uh, I think he asked me, what cards do you still need in your collection? And I just assumed he would just send one, but look at this, he's just sending full play sets. That is pretty badass. And here is a Bach Imp. Again, that art is just fantastic. Remember, in the dark, because this is a 1-1 one, one flyer for two, and you may think, 1-1 one, one flyer for two, that's really bad, and um, you are absolutely right, that's not great, but if you look at it from the dark only perspective, so if you look at the whole set in the dark, there are only a few flying creatures. I believe you've got Fire Drake, Ghost Ship, and you've got Bog Imp. I think you don't have any flyers in white, and I think you don't have any flyers in black. Or sorry, in green, because this one's black, of course. But I think green and white, they don't have any flyers in the dark, so you can go check it. And from those flyers, which one is uncommon? The Bug Imp, the Fire Drake, or the Ghost Ship? Leave your answer down below, and don't look it up beforehand. Just leave your answer down below. You'll be surprised. So we've got a Bug Imp, we've got a Bug Imp, and we've got actually a full play set of Bug Imps. Let's, let's read the flavor text. On guard for larger dangers, we underestimated the power and speed of the imp's much crusted claws. Wow, look at those claws. And you can actually see the wing here. And what's going on here? He, he caught a fish or something? This art is just really cool. Who made this? Ron Spencer. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, Ron Spencer. And it's again, it's a bit alien-like. If you're familiar with the movies from Alien, they had the shape a little bit. I know he was uh, inspired by Geiger when he made art for Fallen Empire. So maybe he also had an influence for the art he made for The Dark. Another playset. And then, oh man, this is another really nice one. Tower of... I can't pronounce this, people. Coriel. Really like the art. This is an artifact... I'm not going to show you yet what it does. Think for a moment. Do you know what this artifact does? I can tell you it's it's not great. Two to cast artifact, right? Tap. Target creature cannot be blocked by walls until end of turn. And again, oh, there's even another card behind. I just thought they were two of these. Beautiful art. I love the orange in this one. I think, is it? Oh, it's Dan Frazier. I thought it was Christopher Rush for some reason, but it's Dan Frazier. And again, it's another card that works against walls. There are so many cards that work against walls and it, walls are not good enough to have so many cards that actually work against them. We need more cards that work with walls. We need more cards like Fortified Area, but then better. I don't know why I'm saying this because I'm not gonna play anything else in 93, 94 anyway. Um, so we've got the towers and then last but not least, this is really sweet, Dance of Many. This is really nice. And uh, Morton, I would really, really like to thank you once again that you just send these cards to me. And also just for, uh, yeah, and even more, a bigger thank you for being patient enough to play against my wall deck. Because those games were, were bad, were bad for my side. You build a pretty nice deck, actually. Dance of Many. So two blue to cast enchantment. And uh, when Dance of Many is brought into play, choose a target summon card in play. Then put a token creature in play and treat it as if you have just brought an exact copy of target summon card into play. That's a lot of play, play, play. If Dance of Many leaves play, hey, here we go again, remove token creature from the game. If token creature leaves play, destroy Dance of Many. If you do not pay two blue during your upkeep, Dance of Many is destroyed. So I've played this card with Bull Lightning. That was actually a lot of fun to do. So Bull Lightning, copy the Bull Lightning, deal 12 damage. If it worked, I mean, Bull Lightning is very fragile. First Strike works, Maze of If works. Actually, a Lightning Bolt on a Bull Lightning works, strangely enough. Huge flavor fill, but it works. So it's definitely not a top strategy, but if it works, it's really sweet. You deal 12 damage. Um, what you can do is when you cast Dance of Many, and while the token copy is still on the stack, you can actually play a boomerang on Dance of Many, get it back to your hand, and um, then the token comes into play, Dance of Many is out of the game, so that doesn't affect it anymore. So you have a token on the board, and you can, can play Dance of Many again and make another copy. So that's just a nice, neat little trick that you can do with Dance of Many and Boomerang, just in case you didn't know 
about that yet. So then you've heard here first on Timmy Talks, but I think it's pretty general knowledge by now. Okay, so we have all this. I'm gonna just clean it up and um, then I'm gonna open up the big package that's here on my right. And we are back. Okay, so this is the big pack. Um, I got a message from Richard. This actually, Richard is not mine. He said, I'm just gonna order something. It's hilarious. Can I send it to you that you open it up and like show it to your viewers? I said, yeah, go for it, man. Send it. And I think that is what this is. I mean, it's big. I think it's like a magic book or magazine or something. He shirt he collects so much. Oh, look at this. Okay, let's have a look. What is this? Test your magic IQ. Let me get the camera a little bit. How do I distinguish an alpha black lotus from other editions? Yeah, of course. What if you have an alpha and a beta black lotus and you need to see to, to see what the difference is? Of course, yeah, it can happen. Um, how many were printed? Good question. Can a complete novice begin playing Magic the Gathering for under $20 and still have fun? Let me just get the camera to show you from close by. Um, your opponent's drudge skeletons are about to make your life miserable, but you have sleight of mind in your hand. Huh? Can you cast a sleight targeting the grizzlies? It's your upkeep phase, and you have seven untapped force and a force of nature in play. Do you have to pay the upkeep? What are the most common revised cards and why are they so useful? Okay, bonus questions. Does the beautiful and talented Sarah Angel get lost in a maze of if, as do so many other creatures? That's the bonus question. And of course they ask that question because um, she doesn't have to tap when she's attacking. Unfortunately, the lovely, lovely Sarah Angel gets lost in the maze as well. Let's look, oh, let's look at this cover. I just want to show you, it's going to get the camera again. I hope you don't get seasick, but Targan's Tome, A Master Guide to Magic by John M. Corradin. I really never heard of this book, but it looks, it looks very interesting. A Master's Guide to Magic. <laughs> what a cool cover. Look at that. The old wizard showing his apprentice, how to play magic, how to wield the power. Wow, this must be old. Top 10 reasons you should buy this book. Let me first try to find out what date this was printed. Um, it's gotta have some information on there. Let's see, acknowledgements. Um, to the editors, no, I don't see a date. Maybe it's at the back. Oh yeah, here it is. Um, Sarah Angel and Mesa Diff. Wizards of the Coast cards. Okay, so they're saying it's all trademarks. I guess it's a book from 94, right? If you look at the contents, it's got to be. Okay, so... We've got top 10 reasons to buy this book. So I want to read them out to you because it's just hysterical. So number 10, my grandmother needs an operation in Switzerland. <laughs> Subtitle, oh, subtle hint. The author needs the money. Number nine, Wizards of the Coast is about to go bankrupt and a small portion of the proceeds goes to their debt service. Sweet. Can you imagine there were people that thought uh, Wizards of the Coast would not exist um, after I think 94 because... Um, there was a whole scandal where people said the game was uh, uh, um, satanic. There was a lot of problems within uh, within the community with Magic the Gathering. Um, let's see, seven. Your local gaming shop is out of Magic, and this is the closest to a fix you can buy. Six. You've already spent several zillion dollars on Magic, and you thought perhaps it would be a good idea to learn how to play. <laughs> okay, man, I'm, I'm still learning. Take it easy. Five, your mother told you that you need to read more and you thought you might as well kill two birds of paradise with one millstone. Liking it, liking it. Four, you're over 40 and you can't read that damn itty bitty print in a rule book. Helpful hints. Um, I'm not 40 yet, take it easy. 
Three, it has always been a secret desire of yours to know just how many goblin digging teams there were worldwide. 1,152,900 to be exact. <laughs> Insane. You're taking a course in graveyard management and now you know better than to mix rhododendrons with the marigolds. You thought it might be helpful to understand the difference between kill, bury, destroy, die, sacrifice, remove, and place. Clarity of thoughts. And the number one reason you should buy this book is... The store that you're standing in presently is not a library and you've spent the last 10 minutes reading a stupid list. Fair warning, you are now required by law to purchase this book. No, just kidding, it's a law. I hate to get the sale this way, but you know how it is, the law is the law. Oh, no kidding, okay. Hey, it could be worse. This could be one of those nine, uh, $79, $99 hey, uh, hardbound coffee table books on the migrating habits of the yellow belly sapsucker. I, I, I'd complain to my congressman if I were you. However, in the meantime, thanks for the cash. I'm going to Disney World. Sweet, man. I'm liking this book. I'm liking the whole attitude of this book. It's hilarious. Let me know um, in the comments if you'd like me to read some more out of this book. And maybe I can ask, oh, here it is. Finally, we found it. Nin 1995, that's when it was printed. Okay. That is something. Look at the letter type. This is old school. So um, if you'd like me to read a little bit more out of this book, maybe, you know, dedicate an episode to uh, to me looking through this book, flipping through it with you guys. Uh, let me know, we've got some pictures in here. And what else do we have? Wow, top 10 uncommons in Arabian Nights. Let's see, what's on what's on one? Of course, Ali from Cairo, because you cannot die, right? Yeah, he is a valuable friend. If you can keep him alive, he'll keep you alive. That's absolutely true. I remember Ali from, from Cairo was really, really a big deal back in the day. I guess I didn't know much about creature removal back then. Uh, anyway, Ali is above Guardian Beast, by the way. Look at this. Can you believe that? Ali from Cairo, Guardian Beast. I mean, come on, guys. And you've got Cabo Ghoul as number three. We're talking about top 10 uncommons in Arabian Nights. Look, if Biff of Freed, Library of Alexandria is number six on this list. Wow. This is sweet. Um, anyway, before I keep rambling on, I think like this meal day has already taken, what, 20 minutes or so. Uh, I would like to thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And I want to give a special thanks to Richard for sending me this. Um, I'm, maybe I'm going to make another episode, so I hope I can, uh, can borrow it for a little bit longer, Richard. If you'd like me to read some, um, articles out of this book, let me know in the comments below. And if enough people want me to make an episode, I'll, I'll make an episode. I'm, I'm flexible. And also a very special thanks to Morton, because this is unbelievable. All these, well, not these Italians, but all these sweet... The dark cards that you've sent me, I really, 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 really appreciate it. Most of these are going to see play. I can guarantee that. I cannot guarantee that this one will see play, though. But, yeah, most of the others really, really will. Um, thank you very much for that, Morton. And uh, I would also like to thank you for watching another video right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And um, if you'd like to help the channel out, leave a like. Whoop. Um, you can also subscribe if you're not a sub yet. You can, of course, always leave a comment. So if you'd like me to read some more out of Targon's Tome, leave a comment. Let me know. And what else is there? Oh, yeah. You can also support the show on Patreon and you will get your name in the end scroll. How cool is that? So you can do that by clicking on the info card that's appearing right now. You can already support the channel starting at one little dollar. Um, and you can check it out. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the amazing, fantastic, beautiful, gorgeous patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
just think it is Samba Kazi. 